Hello, welcome to the Consistent AK podcast. My name is Luke and I'm joined as ever with Nick, the Jedi Good, and we're doing an in-depth episode. We're talking about all the Kevin Smith films and we are on Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which is a very funny film. And we're going to go uh, well in-depth about the whole thing. So uh, sit back, grab that cup of tea, put your headphones in, or put us on loudspeaker and uh, join us. now these bad boys so uh yeah another scooverse film we are at as you mentioned in the last podcast kevin smith's endgame did you call it i yeah and i i stand by it because i thought about this even more that it we'll get into why it is endgame but it is essentially the end of what feels like a phase because then the next phase opens with clerks 2 which is almost like coming full circle Nah. And I was like, yes. it's even more there. Like, It is. Well, it's just it... like, a, so it's Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. It's like a smorgasbord of uh, every person that's been in his films from Clerks to Morax to Chasing Amy to whatever the one that we just did was Dogma. Dogma. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of got everyone in it. Yeah. And I think I, uh, I believe this was going to be like the end of his uh, US universe things this was like oh, was it? originally yeah it was like originally billed as like this will be the last chapter which is why god closes the book at the end of the film nick ah uh, uh, makes sense there you are with your phase two logic but bam See? there wasn't going to be a phase two although there is yeah so um so james silent bob strike back it is um well it's very funny i really like james silent bob strike back I don't think it's as anywhere near as funny as it was when I used to watch it with my mates. Um, mm. First few times I watched it, especially I click commander stuff was really fucking funny. <laughs> um, when I first saw it and a bunch of other things, but before anyway, sorry, I'm jumping ahead as I always do. Let's just talk a little bit about uh, like the, the film and its release. So yeah. it came out in 2001. Um, it's written and directed by Kevin Smith. Like I said, it has basically all of Kevin Smith's main bunch of actors in it. You know how some of these directors use the same actors all the time. You know, you've got James Guns and stuff like that that do the same thing. It was made for twenty-two million and it did thirty-three million at the box office, or thirty-three point eight million. So that's, uh, I mean, it's not, well, it's not massive, but I think we've already decided that around this time that wasn't that bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, maybe. got a good good return. So yeah. um, it kind of was not greatly received by critics, probably because of the kind of film that it is. It's not mm-hmm. really his, uh, you know, hasn't got like the sensitivity and emotionalness that Chasing Amy gives us and hasn't got like sort of like a lot of the, like, obviously Dogma tackles a lot of religion stuff, even though it goes mm-hmm. very like far field of like what people probably would want it to be. But, uh, yeah. but hey, it was great. And uh and more rats and things they've got those very clever like long uh, dialogue things that you and i both love yeah this kind of doesn't really have much of that if mm-hmm. any of it so it's very different it's a very, it's a stoner film isn't it i mean let's be honest yeah so, I, I think it's, it's a very in your face comedy stoner fart jokes yeah and i i, I think it's, the, stuff. It, it's probably the most like sketch comedy out of all of them um yes in that i was when i was watching it again i was kind of like um it could easily be like saturday night live and they've just taken a bunch of sketches of the same characters across a series of saturday night live because it is sort of just here's these characters in this situation um, yes like 
Mike Will Farrell being in there, he was big, wasn't mm-hmm. he? He was from Saturday Night Live. I think he was on Saturday Night Live at this point, wasn't he? This is one of his first... Possibly, yeah. First things that he did, like in on the big screen. Yeah. Um, it's pre Anchorman. So yeah. Yes, definitely pre Anchorman. Yeah. I think I remember when I saw it the first time because he was one of the standout characters in it when I, I remember watching it and things like he's very funny and silly. And, you know, when mm-hmm. he first comes in on the is it a scooter? I yeah, it's like a scooter so, uh, thing. It's a scooter <laughs> thing, isn't it? it? Yeah. It's band. just absolute, just an absolute imbecile. But it's, uh, yeah, I think I was thinking I don't. I've never seen him before, but you know, yeah. things like Elf and stuff came quite soon after this. So it's a, it's a film where they definitely look like they're having a lot of fun, which is probably mm-hmm. why I think it's very enjoyable. There's a lot of characters that just sort of just go for it again, like Ben Affleck and things. Um, seems to be having massive, massive amounts of fun. Yeah, I just don't think it. I think for me, watching it again now is is not as as funny. But I don't. I don't when I when I don't laugh as much as they did the first time because the funniest thing I've ever seen in the cinema is Anchorman because at that point in my life with the group of friends that I was with that was just it was just the perfect film for that time in my life and I cried I cried so much that per- I cried laughing so much that the person next to me moved through a few seats because I couldn't stop <laughs> laughing um but if I watched Anchorman now, obviously there's nowhere, no way I laugh as much as they did then. And I feel that's kind of the same with something like Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, where it's not as funny as it was, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it is not, it is funny still. Yeah, it's, it's just because you uh, know that you know it's coming. Because you, you know, know you know what's coming. I mean, yeah. I w- would have watched it two or three times quite quickly, and I probably still would have laughed the same amount of times, probably mm-hmm. because I was watching it with someone new as well. Yeah. Um, or it's funny because you're anticipating them laughing as much as you laughed, but yeah, it wasn't. But I, I appreciate. The bits that did make me laugh, I'm thinking, man, that was really funny. Like, like I just said about Anchorman, like I cried at this bit in Anchorman, like when the pair of bears smell periods and stuff. It was, <laughs> still was good. Um, so yeah, I but I still enjoyed it. I still yeah. liked. Uh, I still liked what it was. I still think it's great that Kevin Smith was able to get this film out there because this this is the first Jane Silent Bob film that's actually about Jane Silent Bob because they've been. Yeah characters throughout all these other films but this is their first i mean dogma they were pretty big in dogma weren't they like we said in the last podcast yeah that was their their, moments like they were they were in there but this is their you know front front face of all the posters and it's all about them the names in the title which is obviously a play on the empire strikes back right yeah box strike back yeah um i just read actually now that it was it was um it was scheduled to be the last film in this universe okay. or Jane Silent Bob's last appearance. Like it was supposed oh, to end okay. with either they would be done when those films and this was the end of their thing or the whole thing would be done. So yeah. that, neither actually happened. So true. Why Kevin Smith? Why did you lie to us? Wow. But it's worth it because you get Clerks 2. It is worth it. And yeah. as I said before, Clerks 2 is my favourite. Of all of them, <laughs> yeah. which is funny because this because Clerks Two actually is uh, well, I watched it recently now, but that did make me laugh. Yeah, out out loud, um, like uh, like I I could probably just contradict myself, but that did hold <laughs> up. Like that was as funny as it was when I first saw it. Actually, actually, maybe I don't know if that was funnier than Anchorman. I don't know which one was funnier, but both made me cry at the cinema la- laughing. So we will talk about Clerks Two. Yeah, we'll get anyway, that. Nick. You talk. You tell me some stuff about this film. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the the first thing that I wanted to talk about was just the the cast, because like everybody, like even characters, like when we were talking about chasing Amy, and we said we didn't think that Alyssa pops up again. She's in this, and she is in this. I'd completely forgotten that. So when I, you see her at the end, and they, they literally referenced chasing Amy, I was like, oh. that cinema, yeah. So literally, just and. Uh, uh, what's his face is there as well, isn't he? Um, ah, yes. What's his face? Uh, Banky's there, but he's with the the militant black comic yes. creator, and you yeah. kind of get the impression they're in a relationship. Like, yeah, there's do. like, a, yeah, there's that kind of thing. Um, and so the stuff towards the end, where I was like, wow, this really does like tie together all oh, well, the yeah. different things. I, I guess the only kind of people that's missing are, um. Jeremy London from More Rats, um, which is kind of sad because I would have liked to have just seen him somewhere. Um, 
and I think that's probably the only major one that's missing, right? Like, pretty much everyone else is there. I mean, the only person that's missing, only because I've watched them quite close together, but Alan Rickman is not in James. I suppose, right yeah. yeah. But he's True. not, I mean, he's a big character in Dogma, but he's not like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I never imagined him popping back up because Chris Rock's in James Holland's Rock Rock and everything like that. Rock yeah. Rock. Rock Rock. Yeah. His, then, uh, yeah. Yeah. Chris Rock's maybe he, great. He as well. been. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Like, he always makes me laugh because it's just, his dialogue in this, I think, is just perfect. Like, I'd love to know if yes. that was all Kevin Smith or whether some of it was Chris Rock improvising. I, I doubt it. I, there's so many, there's so much of this that I just can't even imagine is like written down. Like, <laughs> I imagine Chris Rock, I imagine Will Ferrell stuff, I, I imagine a lot of uh, Jason Meows, Muse. Muse. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I always think it's just, <laughs> I think it's just going to be better if I just say meows. Uh, music stuff is, uh, I mean, I don't know. There's, I always thought the scene in, uh, I always liked the scene with um, Sean William Scott in the van. Oh, it's so good. Like, that uh, killed me. This it's so time. good. But then I'm like, I wonder how much of that is written down, but then it, it just mm. feel quite Kevin Smithy. Like, uh, mm. the write down. That's a very good bit. Sean William Scott is very, uh, I mean, he was quite a big name at that point as well, wasn't he? Like, yeah, like there's he, so many of them yeah. that pop up, like him and Jason Biggs, and mm. um, who's the other guy that's with Jason? Uh, James Van Der Beek. James Van Der Beek, yeah, that's an amazing scene as well. Like, yeah, it's all good. Um, and like all of those have come off the back of something really big. Like American Pie would have been ninety nine, I think. Ninety nine, yeah. So that was um, still if that that would have just they probably would have just been the second one, I guess. Yeah, um, and obviously Maybe. Dawson's Creek was all the rage. So like yeah. they pulled in some big hitters and like Wes Craven's in it, like for Scream, yeah. which is random. And the which... director of uh, Good Will Hunting. Yeah, Gus Van Sant. Uh, yeah, Gus Van Sant's um, in there. Yeah. Which is also a really good line as well. It's like Jesus, Ben. <laughs> I, <think we're> well. <laughs> I also really like. Oh, sorry, I'm going to interrupt this with just like I also really like the line with the Good Will Hunting bit. Yes. I don't so much think that bit is as funny as it was when I first saw it, but mm -hmm. I do like it when uh, the security guard comes in. And he like he sounds out a code, yeah. and Matt Damon's like, "Damn it, Ben!" And he's just like, "Ah, <laughs> I wasn't with a hooker last night." And it's uh, it's really yeah. stupid. It's so and good. Then like, straight, yeah. Immediately after that, they put the can in front of the door, which is just so mm. stupid. <laughs> Obviously, uh, in my head when I first saw it, I thought they all fell over the can, but they don't. So yeah. I'm a bit disappointed. I just I love as well, like in the the Good Will Hunting bit, then it's like. They're taking it so seriously, and then he just pulls yeah. out a shotgun. Um, yeah, and then you deliver like I feel like Jane Sutton Bob Strike Back is full of amazing referencing dialogue, like it's stuff that you can just quote day to day. Like Affleck, you're the bomb in Phantoms. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've said that in my life when I've talked about a Ben Affleck film. Um, and it's the same as I, I don't know whether you found this, but when I worked in a comic book shop. The amount of times when I wanted to, if somebody was paying for something, quote Jay and say it's 15 bucks, little man. Yeah. Just Put it in my hand. Yeah. Always, always wanted to do it. Never did. Cause not sure how that would go down. But uh, come, come to my shop for a day and try it if you want. <laughs> yeah. I'll get fired straight away. <laughs> Just one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to see the dog is in the James, uh, the Goodwill Hunting hunting season bit is when they they're extras in the background and they they try to leave and they get pushed back <laughs> yeah. in and they're just like ridiculous but there are yeah. a lot of like you said there's a lot of quotable stuff from it it's a very i mean it's kevin smith like he basically put all his nerdiness out hasn't he yeah and he's taken everything they kind of like there is obviously there are conversations a bit like clerks too when they go in in two things and like uh, i mean not so much as in clerks too because clerks too they really go for like lord of the rings and star wars and yeah like the stupidity but there's a lot of stuff kevin smith you could tell he just wanted to say Mm. rather than just rather than just saying it like to people he's like i'm gonna put this in my film and it'll yeah. probably annoy people but it's uh because obviously that's the thing isn't it it's, it's the way people talk to people on the internet uh the way they troll people and everything and they're um that's also funny that's gold not, not, yeah it, it's just like the fuck is the internet <laughs> yeah like, yeah so so stupid and then ben affleck explains it so well yeah um which is still relevant like that's the crazy thing is like the way that he describes the internet is, yeah, it is still, yeah, still internet. spot on isn't it like everyone's like bad-mouthing actors but they're <laughs> yeah. so obsessive the actors they can't leave them alone 
It's like wrestling at the moment, right? And it's not, now I'm going to go off subject, but there's all this stuff like this wrestler called CM Punk. Everyone's talking about him because he's, he's, he's an absolute shit show. But they're talking about him and it's like, we just don't have, no one has to talk about him. Yeah. Like, it's just not, if we don't talk about him, maybe to. he won't ever come back. <laughs> yeah. like, but we keep, everyone just keeps going on and on and on and on about it. It's like, just, yeah. just shut up. Like, if you don't care, please don't care. So, um, yeah, so yeah, is Ben Affleck is spot on with his. Uh, ironically, yeah. with him now, there's like a video of him going around. Have you seen the one of him and Jennifer Lopez? No. Where he's like, he's walking her to a car, and they look like they've had a really bad argument. And then she, he opens the door for her, and as she sits in, he just slams it shut. And then he just turns around, he sees a paparazzi. He's like, "The fuck are you doing?" <laughs> and everyone's on him now. But he's probably just like, he's probably just so sick and tired of like yeah, every I mean, like, bit I'd... of his life. Uh, yeah, just, you just would, leave him alone. You, like. Like that would be the annoying thing right. as well. Like you've got kids, obviously, but imagine like if you were in the same position, but every time you left the house, you knew you were going to have twenty people taking photo, your yeah. photo. At, like, there's not, there's not, as well. like you can't be that switched on that you don't make a mistake every now and again, right? There's not one yeah. time you're going to be annoyed. Or, and I know the argument is that they chose this life, that their famous life, and everything. Else, but there's also a point where you think, as the paparazzi, when you wake up and then we're like, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait by this toilet. And at some point, someone famous is going to go for shit in there. And I will be ready to get their shit face. Yeah. But it's just like, uh, it's a really weird thing to say. But yeah, just yeah. leave people alone. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Don't know, you don't know what that. Anyway, so anyway, that's what this film is about, right? They're going to kick the people's ass that have been dickheads. Yeah. You know, when they beat that little kid up at the end. So good. So half these people are like now. They are just <laughs> yeah. people in a basement being fucking horrible. Yeah. And it's, Stuff like that. So fair play to Jay and Simon and Bob for going to go and get them. So especially that little give this Mac. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess one of the other uh additions that I feel like is part of this culmination of Kevin Smith trying to pull in everyone is Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill. Um yes. their their scenes are amazing. Like Yeah, cock cockknocker. Cockknocker still sticks with me. It's just genius. <laughs> um, and because that's so like yeah. uh, again, that is something I read is it's a culmination, isn't it? It's Luke Skywalker and Joker and um, Trickster. Like, yeah, no, not Fallen. Trickster. Because like, he wouldn't no, have been Trickster. There was a third it. person they said. Well, I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. there was a third yeah. character that you mentioned. Anyway, but it's like a culmination of all three of those. It's great as well. He like he plays that so, like the the comedic beats he does really well, and you can tell that he's just having a blast, just messing around and goofing off. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just think that's great. Um, who else was there? There was somebody else I was thinking of that pops up. Oh, we get Brody. Um, we do get Brody in like very early appearance, and in the background you've got the whole uh talk show thing on his wall mm-hmm. um so they obviously pay reference to that i i can't remember if you said it or if i just filled in the blanks but i was like is that how he opened the comic shop that he became a talk show host yes yeah it was yeah. yeah yeah um and so it's cool to have brody back in it just for like a little bit of a reference um and it's just it is just really impressive how it weaves in all of these characters and actors that he's worked with. Um and it just it all feels correct. Um yeah. there's also the Wes Craven thing. Have you seen that Jay and Silent Bob are in Scream Three? No. So if you watch Scream Three, <laughs> I think they're in it. Do I, anyway. do I have to? No, you can probably find it on YouTube. Um <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's there, or it's a deleted scene or an outtake or something, but there's a bit where Gail does a report from a set, I think, and she's there with a microphone, and they're in the background. And then I I think Jay says something like, yo, Gail, and then she yells at him for something, and then it comes back in, but I'm pretty sure it's in the film, or the YouTube clip lied to me, but the scene's there, so it's definitely uh... a real thing. Um, it would be the first thing I do after this podcast. It yeah, it made me laugh. It it was good, but um, but yeah, so I thought that was great. Um, yeah, I just I just really enjoyed the film. I just thought 
it, as I said, it feels like Endgame because it, it just feels like the culmination of everything. And it feels, again, like he's hit this peak of kind of hitting all of his comedic beats in the right way. Like nothing really falls flat, I don't think. Like there wasn't a... No, step- I don't think anything falls flat. I think, yeah. I think again, it's like some of the other films, like it looks a bit outdated and stuff now, just yeah. because it's an older film, of course. But mm. yeah, it hits all the right notes, the beats. And um, I was going to say, when you talk about casting, like Carrie Fisher and stuff, I think that's actually my favourite scene when mm. uh, the nun scene. Yeah, um, it's great. Just because it's so stupid. It is. Like it's, it, it's yeah, really it's, stupid. Like Kevin Kevin Smith's facial expressions and everything mm-hmm. is so good. Yeah, um, and it's just ridiculous. And um, again, and like just a, a nice cameo. Yeah, and like Jay's delivery there is great. Like Jason Mewes, I think nails this film so well because so much of his delivery is just like pitch perfect, but especially in that scene as well where he's like where she's talking about the book and he's like you too and there's something just in the way that he says it that is like he really does believe that he is correct yeah, he does. In i really book. think he that's why it makes him so good as jay because i think he really yeah. believes a lot of the stuff that he says in this <laughs> yeah. even he carries a lot of the the workload as well doesn't he because he yeah kevin smith doesn't talk that much at all yeah so and they're in pretty much every scene yeah um and there, yeah, that's he's really good with it. I also think I, I like the, the the females as well, the, the yeah. thieves, yeah, like um, Anne Elizabeth and everything. I think their roles are really good. It's a bit cheesy, obviously, but the whole thing's a bit cheesy. But I just um, it's very well done. Like the you know the scenes when they switch from being the animal rescuers to <laughs> thieves Blind and everything. Yeah, uh, uh, it's just uh, ridiculous. And Anne Elizabeth is. I think when I first saw this, I think Scary Movie came up before this. Okay. No, not Scary Movie. American Pie American came Pie. up before this. And I just remember thinking that she had an accent. So <laughs> yeah. when uh, when I saw this, I was like, oh, she didn't have an accent. So she's she's uh, she's American. Of course, yeah. I don't know where she's from. It was, so, um, yeah. Again, that's impressive that like there are three members of American Pie in it, but they aren't in the same... Oh, there's th- two are in the same scene. And that Shannon has yeah. been... Sean William Scott, but Jason Biggs is. There's way a couple there. of uh, there's a couple of things, isn't there? Because there's also there's the Buffy crew. Because you've got um, um, what's her name? Uh, Eliza. Eliza Dusk. Yeah, yeah. And you've got so, and you've got Riley. He's in there as well. He's from Buffy. He's uh, Fred in Scooby Doo Man. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh. And then you've got a bunch of you've got some screen people as well. So you've got Wes Craven. Yeah. You've got Jamie Kennedy's in there as well. I think he's yeah, yeah. in the. PA to Chris Rock. He's the PA, yeah. yeah. So, which is also quite funny as well because he, like, Screen would have been out by then, wouldn't it as well? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he has just a short cameo in it as well. So it's a bunch of people that are quite, I guess, Screen would have come out like ninety eight, maybe or seven or something. Something like that, yeah. So a lot of people that have just just started to be big in Hollywood, yeah, you know, and uh, Kevin Smith's got them all on board to do this ridiculous, uh, ridiculous, ridiculous film. film. Yeah, you th- you think now that Will Ferrell is probably like you look back at his career now, like that was a huge thing. Coop at the time, like uh, with his trajectory, like uh, that came from this. Cause I think this probably got him on. People didn't watch Saturday Night Live. This is probably the film that got them interested in him. Yeah, I think I don't know. I mean, like, I, it's forty I, million good at the box office. I think it is. Right, I think People it's pretty good. I vaguely remember it being like quite big as well. Like either on DVD release, because like I watched it on DVD. Like I didn't see it at the cinema because I like, would have been ten when it came out yeah. uh, um, but I definitely saw it within a year of it coming out on DVD like there's no way I saw it any later because um, it was one of the first I think one of the first like DVDs that I would have owned um, and I just I just remember it being big for some reason like in my head I was like yeah it was everywhere but maybe it wasn't maybe that's just me in hindsight being like I'm trying to think because I don't think I saw it at the cinema I think because I mean I would have been pretty young as well I think I don't know if my older brother would have seen it at the cinema. I don't even know what rating it is. Is it 15 or 18? 18. 15, surely. Is it an 18? 18. Yeah. Really? That wouldn't be an 18 now, though, would it? No. Don't know, I mean, yeah, on my DVD box, it's an 18. Who Not knows? now, though, surely. It wouldn't be. There's no way that gets past an 18 now. Because what's it got in it? That's, I mean, you think the word clit is probably the reason it's an 18. <laughs> like, there's no uh, no chance. Bear in mind, the South Park, South Park film was an 18 as well, actually. Yeah. 
You get away with a lot more these days, <laughs> don't you? Surely. Yeah. Like, there's no no chance on earth that's an 18. I'm surprised by that, but... I guess maybe language, because been... there is a lot of language. In yeah, well, again, the, this this dead, there's no way that's an 18. That's 15 pops. True. There's no way. <laughs> you think of all the access that 15-year-olds have now. Well, yeah. you just watch it on YouTube, couldn't you? So yeah. you, might as well just let, you might as well let the money drop in for it, but... Um, I don't know if my brother saw it the same way. I think he, I think he did, and I think then he was the one who said, "Like you need to watch this," because I, I am pretty sure this is. I mean, I might have said differently, but when I think about it, I think this is the first Kevin Smith film I saw. Okay. I think. I uh, think yeah. that's what. I think it was mine. I believe well. anyway. I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't because I don't think I saw Clerks till after this because I, I wouldn't have. Uh, so I guess I would have been 15, 14 or 15 then at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It was in 2001. Yeah, I think I... Not I think, old enough. Yeah, I think I saw Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back first and then I think it was Dogma. And then I think... Yeah, I, I think I was the work. same. I think it was that and then Dogma. And then cause my brother was so big on films, I think it was kind of like, oh, if you like this... You should watch Dogma. Like it's not as funny, but it's still very good. And then naturally, I think like I saw Clerks after that. But I think the first Kevin Smith film I ever saw at the cinema was probably Clerks Two. Yeah, I'm trying to recall if I saw Clerks Two at the cinema. I think I did, but I don't know because um, I'm not sure if I would. I nearly didn't it. see it. I I only really saw it. I saw it with my best mate at uni, Kobe, and we went to see. Um, it was like summer and no one was there at uni, but we stayed back for the whole summer. Nice. And we went to see Hostel at the cinema at Ooh. like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, like midday. Not just in case people don't know what 12 o'clock in the afternoon is. Midday, <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we call it here in Norway. We call it midday. And uh, <laughs> and then we were just like, well, that was a bit, that was a bit crap and a bit weird. So then as we were leaving, um, this guy, this guy was just like, oh, you can like you go and watch Clerks. You can go and watch this film as well. Didn't have to pay her anything. Wow. And uh, we just went in. Yeah, we went to see Clerks too. And it was the best thing that happened to us. Not the yeah. whole summer, but that day. <laughs> it was a very good moment that day. And we've yeah. talked, we talked about it. We talked about it ever since, like how funny it was. It so, is, yeah. Yeah, he actually wrote to me on a chat group the other day just about Clerks too and how funny it was. But he accidentally put it on our group chat with all our uni guys. <laughs> and it was really odd when he talked about it. He was talking about like pillow pants and everything. <laughs> and then everyone started joining in. So it didn't look like he was meant just for me. It was like, I just watched <laughs> Clerks too. Blah, blah. And everyone was like, yeah, I love that bit. And it was like this whole like following of like six people talking about Clerks too. And yeah. he messaged me, he was like, that message was just for you. I was like, I mean, you didn't say anything to offend anyone. It's like, you're like, fuck the uni guys. <laughs> so anyway, complete uh, sidetrack there. But... Do you, would you have... Uh... Like, if you'd been of age, would you have gone and seen Strike Back in the cinema? Yeah, I yeah. would think so. Yeah. Definitely, it, it definitely that age. Yeah, I mean, I was watching all those things at the cinema, like, yeah, you know, like I said, like your anchor mans and stuff like that. And I feel weirdly like I feel like I don't know how I definitely saw American Pie 2 at the cinema, but I feel like I saw American Pie at the cinema, but I there's no way that's possible because I would have been quite young yeah and i imagine yeah. shannon elizabeth's breasts would have probably don't know overloaded my system <laughs> i would have died because i, I would have been age. like 13 <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ uh so uh, yeah i don't know uh, i don't know but i feel like yeah i, I would 100 percent would have seen it you you would have gone to see it i guess yeah i think so i think um i think i probably would have i think the only one that would have been a hard sell like at the time of me getting into these would have been clerks because yeah. it's not like the humor in clerks is so focused and so well written it's not like necessarily silly humor like it's very very precise in what it does like i think we we talked about it earlier but there's a difference between like clerks comedy and then jay and silent bob comedy and I guess maybe that's the good thing about viewer skew is that something like Strike Back can pull you in as 10, 12 year old because it's just big, silly humor and it makes you laugh. But then as you get older, 
and you sort of appreciate the finer things clerks is kind of that like clerks is really really well written and the comedy is very precise and clerks too is kind of the balance of both right like you get yeah. very good humor but we'll get um kind of silly stuff as well so yeah but it would I, be I a think... tough sell based on like if you were this if you were seeing in a cinema before another film if, if you saw a trailer for dogma you probably wouldn't and uh, not dogma clerks you probably wouldn't think about it too much afterwards yeah but if you saw a trailer for james silent Frog pack you'd be like hey that looked really good like that looked really fucking funny we should go and yeah, see that yeah. afterwards and yeah i think the younger version of me the younger version past me would have thought i'm gonna go and see that but probably something like clerks i think like ah I'll see it whenever like yeah I want to see it because it's this kind of a film, but I'll yeah I'll watch it down the line and things like that. So yeah, yeah I don't um I definitely would have seen James Bond Bob. Yeah, the cinema. which I think that is the cool thing about us doing this like in depth as well is that like every time we've talked about another one, a they're all so like different in terms of like tone and theme and kind of the the humor that's presented, but it is very much like you sort of we can see like Kevin Smith growing as a writer and director in terms of like things get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but there is still always something in view askew for everyone. Like there's still always going to be some form of comedy for everyone in these worlds. Um, and I think with this one, it is almost just like the, because it is the culmination of all of them and all of your characters are there. It's quite nice to just see it in this form. Um, yeah. Like there's a huge difference between Holden in Chasing Amy and Holden in Strike Back. Like yes. just the performance that Affleck gives and like even though in this you can tell he's still disheveled. Like he's still, you know, probably not got all his stuff together and he seems exhausted and whatever else, but he also delivers a lot of comedic beats whereas in chasing amy he probably doesn't deliver a whole lot of comedy um yeah and i think that's really nice again it goes kind of all, all props to kevin smith's writing and yes. whatever else but yeah just it's weird back, it's, great. it's weird that this is when you look at the views universe films like there isn't really another kind of chasing amy or dogma like bedded in there is there because after this, there's Clerks two, yep, and there's the reboot, and there's Clerks, three. there's Clerks three, I guess. But there isn't like you would think there'd be something else in between Strike Back, Clerks two, and the reboot to kind of do something like you just said, like, yeah, like bring some of these characters back down or introduce us to some new characters. But mm -hmm. he kind of just goes, kind of just goes forward because I mean, Clerks three feels like the finale now, doesn't it? Like that feels like the yeah, very much. I don't know if that's official. I don't know if he said that that's done now. I, I think I think he's doing. I could be wrong on this. And Kevin Smith, if you listen, please correct me. But um, I I think he's doing like Twilight of the Mall Rats. I think another Mall Rats is, is that going to happen? I think so. Mm. Um, I mean, that would be a really nice way to end it, wouldn't it? Like something that was. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I just... Yeah, I mean, not that he yeah. has to end it. Like, he can keep no. on rolling. I mean, I know he's done other films in between, like Zack and Miri, and he's done the yes. groovy cartoon thing, but I guess that counts yeah. as a VSQ yeah. film, although we're not doing that one, are we? No, we're doing just live action, but we will talk about Zack and Miri, um, because there is a yes. character in Zack and Miri that appears yes. in Reboot. Yes, I must very, watch this film again. Very funny character as well. I think I've only seen it once, actually, Zack and Miri make a corner. It's great. It, well, again, always makes me laugh. But but one character in question does always make me laugh. Make you laugh. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. So that is pretty much everything I think we want to talk about the Jane and Silent Bob Strike film. Although, before we go, we are going to just talk a little bit about something that Nick has seen that is nothing to do with Kevin Smith, or not that we know directly involves him. Um. Mm. So I saw a few months ago. I saw the new Ant Man film, and then there was Quantum Mania. Nick, however, saw it not 24 hours ago. It, yeah. So as this podcast is going to drop tomorrow, tomorrow, which is the 19th. Well, this was this. If you're listening to this now, I said that yesterday, which is <laughs> so now it's today. So you Time. saw this 48 hours ago. So wow, we're in the quantum realm. <laughs> um, so yeah, Nick, tell us your thoughts. Yes, I, yeah. I thought I'd uh, 
I thought I'd just tag this on here so that in our next pop culture we can um, spend all the time talking about probably Marvel. Marvel's Smith Maisel season yeah. finale. Yeah, which I'll be crying. Um, hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I saw it. And I think at the time when you saw it, I said I wasn't sure if I was going to like it because I hadn't heard anybody say, not like say good things, but I hadn't heard anybody say anything that made it sound good to me. Like I hadn't heard people kind of say like, you'll love this or like, this is a cool idea in it. Um, and I haven't enjoyed an Ant-Man film before. Like the first one, I think, has one good scene, which feels like it's an Edgar Wright scene. And then the second one just isn't a good film. And then you went to see this one, you thought it was awesome. Mediocre, average. Mediocre. Plain That's gen. a pretty good review. It, um, like, I think you're right that critics were overly harsh at it because it's fundamentally, there is nothing wrong with the story. It is A to B. And it does what it sets out to do. I think the script, like the dialogue, is terrible. And there's certain pieces of dialogue in it which I was like, Ugh, why did you say it? Like, no. Um, and it feels like that element of it felt rushed. That felt like... I mean, the, pretty much every Michael Douglas line is a bit of a cringe. Yeah, line. and it it all just felt a bit like I don't know what these characters are meant to sound like or talk to each other like. I, so let's just put in any dialogue and people be sold because it's a big superhero film, so it's fine. It just something about it just didn't sit well with me. Um, and so I, I that... do agree. I do agree with the dialogue. Is there's a lot of like the, you know the, uh, the Jane Van Dyke like the Michelle Pfeiffer stuff. A lot of that is just really thrown in there and it's kind of muddled and a bit. A bit far fetched. I know they're in a bloody quantum realm, but it does feel a bit like. But I still think some of it holds up pretty well. I still don't think they lose much of what Allred has given to Ant Man. I know you don't like any of the other Ant Man films as well, but I think a lot of people like Paul Rudd as Ant Man, mm -hmm. so I don't think he loses that in this film. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll agree with that. Like he's, yeah, he's good, and he still holds his own as the as the character. I just wish that the dialogue was better. Um, what else is there? Um, in terms of Kang, obviously Jonathan made his big question. We won't get into that. But I feel like Kang wasn't as interesting just as a character in this, probably because of the dialogue. Like his dialogue in Loki, when we watched that, I remember saying I loved it because uh, it was ominous. The dialogue was so refined that it was like trying to figure out exactly what he means in what he's saying. And that made it mysterious and pretty intense. Like that scene between Loki and He Who Remains is just like great. It, it, it just feels really well written. Whereas none of his dialogue in this felt like it gave him depth as a villain. It just, it was all kind of like, okay. Especially after watching Guardians. Like in Guardians, we were saying how there's that scene where uh, Star Lord's like, I don't want to hear another villain plan or whatever it is about conquering the world. This felt like that. This felt like it's all about these big speeches of like, I will conquer things, um, with very little. I, I like I like his delivery. I liked his delivery of some lines, even if they aren't, aren't up there with some of the best. But I think they try to cram a lot into. Because the idea is right that Kang is this big conqueror, right? And all the other Kangs, uh, with the mid with the mid credit scene and everything, there's multiple Kangs, Council of Kangs, and they've got him into this quantum realm. They've trapped him there. With the idea that he will never get out. Mm -hmm. But he was it was probably the wrong hero, yeah, to go up against that villain. I think if you were to put Kang up against, I don't know, Captain America. Yeah, I don't, I, something I, like yeah. that, like yeah. uh, a normal uh, a hero that's based in like Earth, and you shove him in that sort of scenario, then it's yeah. a it's a bit of a game changer. Or not that Ant Man isn't a big hero because he is a big hero. He's close like a family member of the Avengers in the comics and stuff. It's just mm -hmm. it kind of felt. I think the only the main disappointment for me was that Kang was sort of beaten, although he's definitely not gone. Jonathan Majors might be gone, but Kang mm -hmm. is not gone just because he got sucked into like another quantum realm. 
um, at the end. He's obviously he's not going to be gone because he's this is the big bad Kang, and I think it just was kind of it was just a bit too. Yeah. I was quite abrupt. confused by that though because, like, the in the Council of the Kang thing, they're like mm-hmm. he's dead. They say they killed him. He's dead. He's dead. Like it said like three times. And Ant Man's thing at the end isn't, um, did I kill him? It's he said that if he didn't leave, think bad things would happen. And that's Ant Man's wonder is like, did I make things worse by stopping? Because he's trying to say, like, is it, did I, is it done full stop or is it done for now? Yeah. And we're okay. But that's what I left it open. And it's not done because, I mean, there are comics and stuff, but he, the Council of the Kangs are going to try and take over now. They're free. They're free reign. The timeline's fucked due to Loki. Yeah. He's, he remains, can't keep control of it. Kang Conqueror was put in this multiverse probably by he who remains and these other Kangs. Mm-hmm. And then he will be back. He'll be the main Kang. Like that version that we saw, I'm adamant he'll be the main one. The only twist that I think could come is that Kang is essentially Nathaniel Richards, who's like a descendant of uh, Reed. Reed Richards. Also, you have, um, I can't remember his name, the one who's going to be in Loki, something, Seely, is it something? I can't remember oh, his the, name. the scientist guy, the one that's in the post. Scientist guy, yeah, the one who's yeah. up on stage, but he, he goes, he, he's actually from the future, and he's gone back in time. Yeah, I see, he's yeah. also Kang Kong, but there's going to be some crossover there somewhere, but yeah. Yeah, I think that was the point, like he's, Ant-Man said he thinks it's done, we're supposed to all think like he's not gone, gone. I mean, because you leave into the mid credits, yeah, and you think, oh, he's gone, gone. But actually, no shit. There's shit tons of Kangs because he's like threatening. There's going to yeah, be more yeah, Kangs, yeah. but he, he's he's the big. I don't know. It, it is a bit of it is a bit of a mess. I I still it's weird because when I've looked at social media reactions now to it being released on Disney Plus, there are a lot of people are like I didn't really like it the first time, but I really liked it the second time. Or mm-hmm. it's like I loved it the first time. Actually, no way. It's pretty shit. Uh, the thing with you is that you're very genuine about like every Marvel film. You don't really flip flop yeah. between the two. You're like, don't like, don't like, don't like. Hey, this was actually all right. Don't like it. Actually, yeah. I can appreciate this was really good because it's got because you you've got a you've always got like a list of what you want out of a superhero film, right? You want a villain, yeah, yeah, yeah. stakes, yeah. something a bit different, something that's not the same. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people, I mean, I'm obviously a kid at heart with these sort of things. So I'm like, fucking hell, it's like. Kang the Conqueror, like on things like yeah. when I first saw Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm like, like when I first saw Yondu, Yondu was in the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Sure, he's not walking around in like a like a mini skirt with a fucking massive mohawk and stuff, but yeah, but I don't know. I can see both sides, but I just don't like you said. I don't think it deserved to get as panned as it did. I mm-hmm. wish it had done better at the box office um, as well because I don't think don't think it deserved to not get that attention. And I was I was still actually surprised it didn't because I actually think I think it's actually promoted very well um, with the trailers and stuff. So hey, yeah, it is just, what it is. It, probably, yeah. it was probably just the wrong. The one thing that's come out of this that I've known is like everyone thinks that that was the wrong film to kick off Phase Five. Like yes, but it's... if you kicked off Phase Five of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which you easily could have done because it's not tied to anything, and yeah, then done right. Ant Man, or you had wedged in like a more serious film in between like mm-hmm. if it was guys of galaxy volume three and then secret invasion which mm-hmm. i said is a serious film with those aliens but it's like a thriller and then you went into the answer ant-man quantumania maybe it's received a bit differently because yeah just yeah i think for my thing it was that it just you know i say it all the time that i think a superhero film now needs to say something or have something unique about it and i think that's the thing that quantumania doesn't is that it it could just be any other action film. Like, in my head, and this is not meant as a stab because obviously these films make so much money, it reminded me of, like, Fast and Furious 9 in that it is just an action film that you could, like, put on, lose two hours and ignore the world, leave and never think of it again. Um. In the it just that's it. Whereas Guardians was like, that will stick with me because it did something emotionally to me. Um, th- I think that is just how I felt about the the third Ant Man is that it's like it's not a terrible film and that 
it does what it does. It's in not. The same way. Yeah, it's not a terrible film. It's definitely not up there with some of them. I mean, there are some. There are two or three of those MCU films that are like, they're not good. They're they, they're fine, but they're not great. And it's Civil War. Oh, Nick, why? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> um, you know, like Dark World and stuff was mm-hmm. what I received, and I agree with that and things. And there's there's a couple of others in there that are a bit of a you know they're not like good. But again, I read this article the other day, and it's kind of like. With, with the MCU films, because that's what we'll focus on, let's talk about superhero films in, gen- in general, because there are some terrible ones, there are some very good ones, people have different opinions on films, but it's like, every other time there's a film out, it's like, Marvel Cinematic Universe is back, how good was, like, how good was fucking Endgame, like, what a way to end it, and then it's like, how good was Far From Home, but how shit was the Multiverse of Madness, but how shit was the Eternals, but how good was Wakanda Forever, like, the MCU is finally back on track, mm-hmm. but how shit was Ant-Man Quantumania, MCU is dead. Fuck me, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was brilliant. Like, the MCU is back. Like, everyone's going to have their taste. It's go- it's a juggernaut, so it's always going to make money, regardless of anything. But sometimes there are those films that I think are just the popcorn films, right? They're just there. Um, you know, they're, they're just there. Like, they're going to release them and things, but there are going to be, every now and again, there's going to be some gems, which is what you're, you know, what someone like you is looking forward to, right? Yeah. You want these yeah, films yeah. to do something different for you and you know, they they will happen. I, I feel like the Marvels is probably going to get slaughtered because of what, what it is. You know, mm-hmm. three female leads, but I actually think it looks very good. Like, mm-hmm. And that's someone who didn't actually like the Miss Marvel TV show, but I think it's going to be like one of those like sleeper hits. Yeah. I actually rewatched Wakanda Forever um, a few nights ago with my wife. She hadn't seen it before. And um, actually, really, I liked it a lot more the second time than the first yeah, time. Yeah, I, mean, I, I quite enjoyed it the first time. I thought the ending's great yeah, as well. So like, I, just I, wish I enjoyed it, it the great. first time, but I it was it was much it was even better the second time. Um, yeah. So it's good. But anyway, I'm glad you saw Quantum Mania. You can now move on with your life and I can, look yes. forward to Secret Invasion is probably next. Yes, and our podcast. Well, that, Flash. That's true. Flash is Flash out. Is and um, and yeah, our uh, we're on a double episode again today. So for all of our mm. thoughts on Guardians which obviously I've just yes. talked a bit about, you can listen next. Right right next. Yes. After we finish wrapping up. We like these week. double episodes. We do. So I would say that it's planned, but it's not really ever planned. It's kind of like, we're going to yeah. do them separately. And I'm like, I can't do it. We're going to do a double bill. And it's like, whoa, hey. Yeah. So it's just like just like our Kickstarter, which hey. is a double bill of comics. We plugged. So if you're interested... Uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, in comics, Nick and I wrote a comic. It's called Odyssey. It's coming out in a volume called Lone Tales, with another comic called Whistleblower. So, Ooh. you know, we talk we talk more about it in another episode, like coming out later today. But hey, go to our social medias and look for our Kickstarter. Yes, back. I also back keep it. forgetting that we record these, so I'm very curious. Like when we're well, these are up on YouTube, if I ever watch it back half the time, my hands are over my chin, or I'm like. Doing something weird, Nick. <laughs> so you can find us on YouTube. That's a that's a yeah. segue into that. If you want to listen to more of our podcasts, you can find <laughs> us on YouTube by searching for Consistently Okay Podcast. You can find us on social media, Twitter, at Consistently Pod, Instagram, Consistently Pod. Nick has his own social media channels. I have I have a Twitter. It's um it's big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So find me there. Uh, so yeah so um, and all of our old podcasts you can find them we talk about MCU Zack Snyder wrestling Jeff Lemire there's a whole bunch of, uh, of episodes that you can find if you enjoy this one if this is your first time listening so um, our, um, so our next episode comes out later today it's pop culture related and our next in-depth episode is the wonderful Clerks 2 so yes. we will um, we we'll listen have... to next time we'll see you very shortly and if um, we'll also if have a little bit in-depth we'll see you in a while just we do have a guest for Glurks too. We are bringing back the wonderful Jeremy from the Candair podcast, um, Fantastic. which I'm yeah super excited to talk close to because when we talked about doing uh, viewers skewers in depth, I told Jeremy and Jeremy was like, I would love to talk to Clerks too. So this whole time we've been like, we'll get there, we'll, we'll do it. So we're on it. We can't promise that Jeremy and I won't just talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the whole time, which has nothing to do with Clerks 2. We <laughs> might do, but you should check out their podcast, Can Their Podcast, and also one yeah. of our good friends, uh, I Get Your Comic Con as well. Their podcast is fantastic as well. So yes. you should check those guys out as well. 
All right. All right. Nick. Yes. You have a very nice day. Um, All right. I've lost track of where we are when this pod. I guess yeah. This will, this one's comes out in the morning. So have a good day, everyone. There you go. All right. All right. Take care. Cool. Bye. Bye.